A TikTok that's basically been making its way around the manosphere is talking about this young woman here whose name I believe is Allie. And she was briefly interviewed here in this little TikTok video about um, how to marry a high value man and become a housewife. And this was one of the things that Kevin Samuels had talked uh, about very often about high value men and how women who wanted a specific type of lifestyle were able to achieve it. And this is one of the big things that Kevin Samuels talked about before, of course, passing away. And one of the things that um, Ali brings about, talks about, I should say, in this video, which we'll listen to very briefly. And, but the, the point of this video is not really talking about high value or anything of that nature. It's mostly the comment section that we'll uh, do a little bit of a dive into. And so we'll take a quick listen. Okay, Ali, show me your ring. Oh, here. Now tell me what you do for a living. Oh, I love my husband. <laughs> and how did you how did you get that awesome job? Well, I became a better human being and I became feminine and also shocking, submissive. So And that was basically one of the big things that discouraged a lot of women were a lot of the traits that she talked about about being fem uh, fem more feminine about being submissive and about being a better person now of course she talked about you know the type of person that you want to marry maybe you want to marry a doctor maybe you want to marry a lawyer maybe you're looking for an engineer etc right whatever type of man that you're looking for typically going to have qualities and traits that he's going to be looking for just like the woman now, of course, a lot of the comment section is basically just going in and roasting her, talking about, you know, we're strong and independent. We don't need no man. But one thing I wanted to focus on was one that got a lot of likes up here. And it says, actually, I'll have the last laugh as a female physician. Or it says you can just become a lawyer and dentist and just hire a husband. And it's funny. And it, people are like absolutely heartbreaking and sad. And most of these women are going to end up single and alone and die alone as kevin samuels would often say but one thing that's talked about here is actually i'll have the last laugh as the female physician and so when you actually look at the statistics most of the female most of the doctors that are coming out of school are women as it says here more than 53.5 percent of applications to md graduating medical schools come from women up from uh, who made up 53.7 percent of students matriculating but what is the outcome what is the outcome of a lot of these strong independent women who are like i'm just going to go out there and i'm going to be the doctor right well there's a problem in the medical industry female physicians burn out faster than their male colleagues and here's why the average expectancy is that almost 90 percent of, of studies that compared burnout by uh by gender says female physicians sample reported higher burnout prevalence particularly in the form of emotional exhaustion this suggests that women doctors may detach from their patients slower uh, slower than men and then and therefore become emotionally fatigued faster and the average rate was at about six years and there was another article this article i believe was from 2021 and there was another article here from 2019 too many female doctors go part-time or stop working why that's a big problem Another article here talking about why women leave medicine. This is from the American Association of Medical College talking about this from 2019. Research shows that almost 40% of women physicians go part-time or leave medicine altogether. So you have a larger majority of women who are basically going to be your doctor. And within the span of about six years, it says many of them will end up quitting. And this is very similar that we're seeing within nurses as well as 90% of nurses are women. But the problem is, is that report finds that 90% of nurses consider leaving the profession in the next year. Of course, a lot of people want to blame this on the pandemic. And this has actually not, not been the case. There's been all, more reports nurses are thinking about leaving. Um, and the pandemic isn't solely to blame. 90% of, res of respondents are considering leaving the nursing profession in the next year with 71% of nurses that have more than 15 years of experience thinking of leaving as soon as possible or within the next year or within the next few months. 72% of, res of respondents said that they were experiencing burnout long before the pandemic. And this is the problem when you ask women 
And there was another article here talking very similarly for, for that young woman who was like, I'll just be a lawyer, right? There was this person over here who said, oh, you just become a lawyer. And then, of course, they're finding the exact same problem when it comes to law, where it says up to some estimate that up to between 30 and 45 percent of women leave the legal profession mid-career. Why do so many women leave the law? And it's, and it's, all this, it's always the same thing. All of these articles all talk about the same thing. Is that once the biological clock starts knocking on their door, they leave. Most of them go back and become mothers. It was funny. I had um, met a female doctor, and she like was like just finishing her rotation. She was like in her, like ten years into her career, and she was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna leave and go become a single mom." And I'm like, "What about what are all the patients gonna do?" And she's just like, "I'm gonna go be a mom." I'm not. She's like, I'm not gonna do this. She's like, ah, you know, I might go part time. I might go work, you know, maybe at a doctor's office somewhere. But she's like, I'm not putting in these long hours for the rest of my life. And it's just, and it's just a sad case when a society. And it's a good picture here. What was it? This was a good picture when you ask women to shoulder. When you ask women to shoulder, a society, they're just not capable of doing it. It's just the way that women are designed. And it's a shame that society asked them to do it. God did not require women to shoulder society. In fact, God went on to say um, in the book of Genesis, it says, And Jehovah God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a help. I will make him a help meet for him. So in essence, God said, I'm going to make you, I'm going to create someone that's going to be there to help you. As Adam looked about the garden and he saw every, all these other animals had a mate. They had someone that was paired with them. And he said, there's nobody here for me. So God, after seeing that Adam had realized that, said, okay, well then we'll make somebody for you. But Eve was not responsible for shouldering the responsibilities of expanding the garden. That was primarily Adam's role very similarly with what's going on with many of these women who think that they're going to be this strong and independent woman that they're going to go out there and shoulder the weight of society and the reality is that is not the case as most of them end up quitting most of these women end up quitting their jobs there was that you know that I forgot I forget the name what was it Betty the Rover that little that image that you know of the strong independent woman it's funny when when they put her in a male dominated role, which is typically in the factory work, I think she lasted in the in about three weeks. So she was used as this role model for strong and independent women, even to this day. But when you actually look back, I, I don't think she lasted even more than three weeks. I think after working three weeks in the factory, she ended up quitting. And it is what it is. This is the route that society is going. And the bad part is is that when you're putting this emphasis on women for your infrastructure in areas like medicine or law enforcement or in nursing and these women can't handle it they can't handle it over the long run you end up with societal collapse and you end up with inflation because now you have less doctors available for communities and so the only thing that happens is in the supply and the laws of supply and demand you now have to pay these doctors and lawyers and nurses more money like for example myself I typically work anywhere between 48 and 60 hours a week. And a lot of the women that work in the hospitals don't want to do that. And so a lot of these hospitals are short. That's why you see a shortage. So many nurses quit in 2020 and 2021 and 2022. That's why you go on all these messaging boards. There are jobs everywhere looking for nurses. And there's nobody there to fill them, especially as the demographics are getting smaller and smaller because the generations that came after the baby boomers, like my generation, which is the next generation after them, is smaller. And as you go down, it just gets it's, it just becomes a funnel where the generations are smaller and smaller and smaller. And there'll be less people there to keep up with infrastructure. This is the route that they have chosen to go on. And it will be to their detriment. This is why I say that stuff like this is a self-correcting problem. Because another nation or another group of people who practice patri patriarchy, like you see... Uh, the, the country is letting in a lot of Hispanics through the border, right? Like this woman here. These are the people who will be the future Americans. These, this is the, 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 the future is patriarchy. The future is not female. The future in America will be patriarchy. And for many of these countries who foolishly go the route of promoting feminism, they will end up with demographic 
replacement. They will die off. And Elon Musk is basically sounding the alarm about this. And the silly thing is, you know, there's a lot of people that they're like, oh, this is just a depopulation narrative. You know, they're trying to depopulate the world. That doesn't work. If you've watched any sort of survival show or any movie or in any sense where people are forced to survive, there is the, what is the expression that um, ingenuity is the mother of invention? These people learn to survive. And these, these types of people who end up living as a result of depopulation would not be easily controlled. They would be people who have learned to survive and are willing to fight for survival. Those people are not easily controlled by propaganda. So the, the narrative that, well, maybe this is just about depopulation, it's not good in the long run. It'll just create hard times that'll bring about strong men. We just happen to live in weak times. That's why you see a lot of the stuff that you see. We're living in the era of the good times, and those good times create weak men. But the inevitability is that you end up with hard times as a result of those weak men, and then come the strong men. It is what it is. That is life. That is a cycle of life. Just like you have you know, winter, spring, fall, summer, right? We might love the summer. We might like you know, the fall, but winter is coming. And a lot of people don't like winter, but it is this the cycle of life. And that is basically uh, what's going on right now within the world. And the countries that practice patriarchy are going to be just fine. The places like Japan and China that is having issues with their own population and all over the West. That's why Europe pulls from where? They pull from the Middle East. The Middle East is a patriarchal society. Why does America pull from... Uh, Hispanic countries and not from Canada is because Canada is depopulating as well. But places like in Latin America continue to grow because of a patriarchal lifestyle. The future is patriarchy. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Leave your comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll check you next time.